Whether you've had an ACL reconstruction or you're a clinician working with athletes after an ACL reconstruction, I'm going to discuss commonly held beliefs related to ACL surgery, average rates of return to sport, and potential risk factors associated with a second injury. Prior to undergoing an ACL reconstruction, most athletes have certain expectations regarding their future level of function and their time to return to sport after surgery. For example, a 2016 study found that in a preoperative group of athletes undergoing surgery for the first time, known as primary ACL reconstruction, or the second time on the same leg, known as a revision, all of the athletes expected a normal or near normal condition of their knee, and two thirds expected to return to sport at the same level as prior to their injury without any restrictions. In a study by Webster et al. in 2019 that also recorded preoperative return to sport expectations, the researchers found that 91% of the cohort expected to return to sport and 84% expected to return to their same pre-injury level. Armento et al. in 2020 provided adolescent athletes who were 12 to 18 years old with a resource guide prior to undergoing surgery. This guide stated that athletes should expect to be out of sport for a minimum of six months with an average return to sport clearance of nine to 12 months. Even with this information provided, the authors found that the majority of our adolescent population expected to return to sport after ACL reconstruction far sooner than the expected timelines, indicating potential unrealistic preoperative expectations. A significant proportion of athletes expect a normal or near normal condition of their surgical knee, a full return to sport at the same level or higher as prior to their injury, and a full return to sport in the shortest time possible. But how often are these expectations lining up with reality? A systematic review and meta-analysis by Ardern et al. in 2014 investigating return to sport outcomes in athletes after ACL reconstruction found that 81% of athletes returned to any sport, 65% returned to their pre-injury level of sport, and 55% returned to their competitive level of sport. The authors did not clearly define the differences between pre-injury level of participation and competitive sport. However, it's fair to assume that an athlete's pre-injury levels at least within the included studies in this review, ranged between recreational and competitive sport. Although a large number of athletes undergoing primary ACL reconstruction return to some level of sport participation, this review indicates that roughly only half return to competitive sport. DeFazio et al. in 2020 conducted a systematic review and meta-analysis comparing return to sport rates between athletes receiving hamstring tendon versus bone patella tendon bone ACL grafts. The authors of this review state that, regardless of the graft type, less than half of the athletes return to sport at the pre-injury level after the primary ACL reconstruction. Returning back to the cohort presented by Webster et al. in 2019, out of the initial 84% of athletes expecting to return back to their same pre-injury level, only 24% actually met that expectation at the 12-month mark. However, because this information was collected at 12 months out from surgery, a greater number of athletes might have returned to sport at their pre-injury level beyond this one-year timeline. It is also worth noting that 15% of this entire cohort gave up sport by 12 months. Of those athletes that gave up sport, 71% reported fear of re-injury as their main reason for not returning. Ultimately, it is up to the athletes' orthopedic and rehabilitation teams to set appropriate expectations for patients, their family members, coaches, and all other key stakeholders leading up to a primary ACL reconstruction. Outside of presenting patients with the data on average return to sport and return to full prior level of competition rates, it is paramount for athletes to understand the risk factors associated with and the probability of a second ACL injury. This leads us to the question, what are your chances of a second ACL injury? A systematic review performed by Barbara Weston et al. in 2020 found that although roughly 80% of athletes post ACL reconstruction return to some level of sport, one in five athletes sustained a re-injury to either knee. Another systematic review by Wiggins et al. in 2016 reported that the incidence of re-injury in young patients less than 20 to 25 years old who returned to high-risk sport was 23%. This means that nearly one in four young athletic patients who sustain an ACL injury and return to high-risk sport will go on to sustain another ACL injury at some point in their career and they will likely sustain it early in the return to play period. Level one sport and high risk sports are defined as any sport involving hard pivoting, cutting, and jumping. Basketball, football, soccer, and skiing are examples of level one sports that demonstrate the highest risk of second ACL injury. 
A systematic review and meta-analysis performed by Kay et al. in 2018 looked at children and adolescent return to sport rates following ACL reconstruction. They reported the most significant finding in the present study was a very high rate of return to any sporting activity after ACL reconstruction in the pediatric population and a high rate of return to competitive level sports at the pre-injury level. Unfortunately, this was associated with a relatively high graft rupture rate and injury to the contralateral ACL. Although over 80% of these athletes returned to their pre-injury level, close to one out of every three athletes suffered a second ACL injury. The authors go on to note that the high rate of graft or contralateral ACL rupture following ACL reconstruction in this age group highlights an important concern during rehabilitation for this population. What factors increase the chance of a second ACL injury? There are a host of risk factors contributing to why athletes may sustain a second ACL injury, but I'm going to review some of the most commonly researched and discussed factors. The first is return to level one sports. Returning to level one sport after ACL reconstruction is the highest risk factor for sustaining a second ACL injury. A systematic review and meta-analysis by Kronstrom et al. in 2021 reports that return to high activity level was the most prominent risk factor for sustaining a contralateral secondary ACL injury. Additionally, the Delaware Oslo ACL cohort study by Grindham et al. in 2016 noted that the knee re-injury rate was over four times higher in ACL reconstructed patients who returned to level one sport after surgery compared to those who did not return. Why are level one sports the number one risk factor? These sports provide the most frequent exposure to specific joint angles and forces that are known mechanisms of ACL injury. These joint angles include shallow knee and hip flexion, internal tibial rotation and forward translation, knee valgus, and the lateral trunk and knee abduction. An ACL injury most commonly occurs in these specific joint angles during deceleration and or direct contact and collision with another athlete. How about an early return to sport? Grindham et al. in 2016 report that during the first nine months after surgery, a later return to sport was significantly associated with a lower re-injury rate. For every month of delay in return to sport, the re-injury rate was reduced by 51%. Patients who participated in level one sports earlier than nine months after surgery sustained 39.5% re-injuries compared to 19.4% knee re-injuries in those who returned to level one sports later than nine months after surgery. Beecher et al. in 2020 found that athletes who had returned before nine months after reconstruction had an approximately seven-fold higher rate of second ACL injury compared with those who returned at nine months or later. It was noted by Grindham et al. in 2016 that the increased risk could be due to insufficient biologic healing, incomplete rehabilitation, or both. From a timeline perspective, waiting at least nine months for a full return to sport appears to provide the greatest likelihood of minimizing the risk of a second injury. Although there are rare outliers, such as Adrian Peterson, who return and excel in sport earlier than nine months, trying to rush this process and accelerate a faster return prior to nine months should not be the goal for the vast majority of athletes. There should be adequate time for the maturation of the graft, in addition to sufficient time progressively preparing the athlete for the demands of their desired sport. Is age a risk factor for a second injury? Individuals who are younger than 20 years old have significantly higher re-injury rates compared to older individuals. Before proceeding, it should be noted that younger age in and of itself is not a causal risk factor for a second ACL injury. Return and more frequent exposure to high-risk activities or level 1 sport is the primary risk factor. It just so happens that individuals younger than 20 years old are most likely to return back to a high-risk sport or activity. As I mentioned earlier, the systematic review by Barbara Weston et al. in 2020 discovered that a high rate of athletes less than 20 years old returned to sport, but 1 in 5 suffered re-injuries to either knee, and the majority of these occurred during high-risk sports activities. Kronstrom et al. in 2021 state the following. The results from the present meta-analysis support the findings of a previous review that reported an increased rate of secondary ACL injuries in individuals younger than 25 years. Similarly, we found the odds of sustaining a contralateral ACL injury in those younger than 18 and 20 years to be twice the odds of those older than 18 and 20 years, respectively. Ander Nord et al. in 2015 concluded that in both male and female participants, 
age less than 20 years predicted an almost three times higher five-year risk of contralateral ACL reconstruction. I want to reiterate that participating in a level one sport is the biggest risk factor for sustaining a second ACL injury, not age. It just so happens that individuals younger than 20 years old are most likely to participate in and return back to level one sport. Is female sex a risk factor? Female sex is commonly thought of as a high risk factor for second ACL injury. However, this is not in line with the majority of the current evidence. Patel et al. in 2021 report that there is a negligible, non-statistically significant difference in the relative and absolute risk of experiencing a second ACL injury, both ipsilateral and contralateral combined, between both sexes. Stated more simply, males and females display similar chances of a second ACL injury, both groups with over a 20% risk of re-injury. Does graft type influence re-injury rates? Allografts, grafts from a cadaver, are reported to have higher re-rupture rates compared to autografts, grafts from an individual's own body, as evidenced by the systematic review performed by Wasserstein et al. in 2015. In regards to differences between autograph types, hamstring tendon versus bone patellar tendon bone versus quadriceps tendon, there are relatively similar rates of a second injury or graft failure as noted by the systematic reviews and meta-analyses by Marbers et al. in 2019, Dai et al. in 2022, and Haybeck et al. in 2022. Haybeck et al. in 2022 concluded that all these graft options deliver comparable results in terms of graft failure rates, and therefore every graft type could be rightly considered as a reliable option for ACL reconstruction. Autographs are the superior option over allographs for those expecting to return back to activities involving high amounts of pivoting, cutting, sprinting, and jumping. Determining which autograph to use is largely dependent on surgeon preference and their training and exposure to a specific graft. And finally, quadriceps strength and return to sport testing. Although objective return to sport testing is necessary and highly recommended during the post-surgical process, it is unclear whether a battery of return to sport testing significantly reduces the risk of a second ACL injury. Return to sport testing commonly consists of a combination of isometric and or isokinetic quadriceps and hamstring strength assessments, hop and or jump testing, psychological readiness, and a graded return to practice, sport, and competition. There are multiple systematic reviews with mixed or conflicting findings on this topic. For example, Loichiel et al. in 2019 state, passing return to sport criteria did not show a statistically significant association with the risk of second ACL injury. The quality of evidence rating prevents a definitive conclusion on this question and indicates an opportunity for future research. And Webster et al. in 2019 write, passing return to sport test batteries did not significantly reduce the risk of further knee injuries in general or ACL injuries specifically. Welling et al. in 2020 report that passing return to sport tests can increase the chances of return to sport, but does not determine the likelihood of secondary ACL injuries. However, there are a handful of papers, including Grinham et al. in 2016, arguing for the importance of assessing quadriceps strength as a key factor for determining risk of secondary ACL injuries. The most recent ACL Reconstruction Clinical Practice Guideline by Katsafaki et al. in 2023 notes that currently it is not clear if passing a battery of tests is associated with lower risk of second ACL injury. The authors add that despite this caveat, we maintain that our clinical goals should be to restore all impairments and return the athlete back to the previous status, if not better. What's the key takeaway from all the murkiness just mentioned? Even though it may not be completely clear how helpful return to sport testing is from the standpoint of predicting second ACL injuries, it is still incredibly important for assessing an athlete's current capacities and readiness for progression and rehab and ultimate preparedness for the demands their sport. This testing should occur throughout the ACL rehab process and should cover a variety of metrics, including isolated quadriceps and hamstring strength and symmetry, psychological readiness, jumping performance, and any other objective metric related to the demands of that athlete's sport. The most recent clinical practice guideline by Katsafaki et al. in 2023 provides a detailed outline of recommendations for bare minimum testing results for both return to running and return to sport. So can you actually prevent a second ACL injury? As you hopefully discovered from this video, there's no magic bullet or one specific thing to completely prevent a second ACL injury. 
Level one sport is inherently dangerous and injuries will never fully disappear. Athletes should be aware of and accept that returning back to level one sport is the biggest risk factor for sustaining a second ACL injury. In order to best prepare an athlete for returning to level one sport, these are five things that should occur. Number one, wait at least nine months for a full return. Number two, complete a progressive and adequately demanding rehab and training program during these nine plus months. Number three, frequently assess the limb and entire athlete's capacities and qualities necessary for successful performance through a battery of return to sport tests. Number four, complete a graded return to practice, sport, and competition-based program. And number five, demonstrate psychological preparedness and confidence for a full return back to sport. Here are the eight main takeaways from this video. One, high patient expectations may not match the reality of average return to prior level of injury and competition rates after primary ACL reconstruction. Two, roughly two thirds of primary ACL reconstruction athletes return to their prior level of sport and half return to a competitive level. Three, on average, 20 to 30% of athletes returning to sport will suffer a second ACL injury. Four, Return to level one sport is the strongest predictor of experiencing a second ACL injury. Five, younger populations are at elevated risks due to the nature of this group having the largest probability of returning back to level one sport. Six, female sex is not a risk factor for a second ACL injury. Seven, allografts compared to autographs demonstrate larger rates of re-rupture and second ACL injury. Autographs, quadriceps tendon versus hamstring tendon versus bone patellar tendon bone are relatively similar in terms of average re-rupture rates and are highly utilized and recommended over allografts for younger active populations undergoing ACL reconstruction. And eight, a battery of return to sport testing has mixed results in regards to significantly reducing the risk of a second ACL injury. However, objective testing should be used throughout the rehab process to determine readiness and progression of rehab and guide decision-making for appropriate reintegration to sport participation, play, and competition. If you would like a more thorough guide on the entire ACL rehab process or more information on the return to sport decision-making process, check the description box below for additional resources we have on those topics. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe, and leave any comments down below.